Reverend Bennett Spong of the Diocese of Southwark, uh, St. Luke's, and St. Thomas's in, in Charlton. Uh, well, I think it's uh, there are a lot of lessons to be learned here. I think the church um, has been offered an opportunity uh, to create a dialogue with uh, a movement, a worldwide movement that is uh, fundamentally seeking truth and justice, and this is something that the church share common interest in. I'm sad that it's shut its doors, or find it necessary to shut its doors. I don't think it. Uh, Stuart Holmes here, one of the protesters, is holding my dog Fair while he. Um, there you are, Fair. Uh, Stuart, have you been here throughout? Um, no, I wasn't here at the start. When did you arrive? About three or four days ago. And are you camping here? Yeah. And what's your background? Uh, I'm an activist. Have you ever had a normal, what I would call a normal job? Uh, I used to be normal, but then I saw the light. <laughs> <laughs> what was your normality? Uh, I was a design draftsman. Right. And what um, caused the light to dawn on you, as you put it? Um, I became concerned what, with the things that I was asked to do, like design nuclear power stations and design oil refineries. refineries. And what concerned you about those uh, projects? Well, the harm, the harm they do to the planet. And so now, as an activist, what kind of things have you done? For the, last 29, for the last 29 years, I've been a campaign against tobacco. And for the last few years, I've taken on climate change. Uh, the main focus of that is anti-nuclear, because a lot of climate change people are saying that nuclear is the solution. It's not. Nuclear is a worse threat than climate change. How can be, being here, um, including having the cathedral shut and a, a leading churchman, someone who's instinctively on the side of the left in Britain, how can that help your cause? Well, this is part of a global movement. These, these camps uh, are springing up all over the world. And, and that's right, because uh, what we're trying to do is to save the planet from materialism. Materialism manifests itself into things like nuclear power stations. We've got Fukushima at present bubbling away that's threatening all life on this planet. It doesn't seem to be a solution. Uh, so we need to get rid of nuclear power stations. We need to rethink the way that we live. And my personal solution is to go from materialism to minimalism with fun. And basically, this camp they've set up here is a minimalistic lifestyle. Everybody's happy. Nobody's spending money. Uh, I mean, are people an extremely low carbon footprint. Are people actually staying here overnight, or are they going to their comfy homes to wash and stuff? Um, most people stay overnight. And. Um, Surely the only reason the camp can survive like this is because of all the industry around it that looks after it. The corporation comes and takes the rubbish away. Um, it's, it's capital industry that helps to supply the food. Uh, this is true. I'm not saying this is the final solution, if that's a good term to use. <coughs> uh, but it is um, a solution in its infancy. This, can be this idea can be vastly improved on. The, the idea of minimalist lifestyles... Uh, I call it, I've got a system called domicile allotments, which is basically living in futuristic polytunnels, which get free heating and lighting from the sun and all that sort of stuff. And you, you grow your own food in the back garden. You don't need cars, you don't need roads, you don't need power stations. You've, you've, solved, you've solved economic collapse and climate change with a, with a very simple idea. And do you live in one of those? Uh, I did actually make a pilot project, but it's still in its infancy. I've got to make a, another pilot. Would you like you, to see it? I've got a photograph. Do you have a website? I do, yeah. What's it's, the website called? It's called eatfruitveg.blogspot.com so Talk me through this plan of your polytunnel community. Okay. Well, this is a, a football field, just to demonstrate the size of it. Uh, you replace the goalpost with polytunnel hoops, and you stretch in between monoflex, which you see on the outside of a scaffold. It's a fantastic material. Uh, you can put a lot of tension on it, and it ignores the rips and tears. Okay, I actually made a pilot project, uh, but in the process of making it, I found a better way of doing it, which is the natural state of affairs. It's, it, it's, it has to go through a, a, a time of development, uh, but the cost of one housing unit is £100. Unofficial camp master. How long have you been here for? Nine days. And what, why are you here? To support the cause. But which cause? Because there's plenty of I... causes. Two reasons. First, because I'm against all these cuts. And secondly, I don't feel safe in my own home. Do you feel safe out here? 
a lot safer than I do in my own home. Join the August riots. I was at home, okay? And uh, it was about 11 o'clock at night. I was at home and I heard one hell of a commotion going outside. And I looked out the window and literally six feet from my front door, there were about 50 or 60 people fighting with pipes, with sticks, with bottles. One guy even had a heavy armchair over his head like that and he was bringing it down on people.